Hello, it is Wednesday and welcome to another sort of weekly-ish reading vlog. Uh, still hard at work as I was in the last one, however, you know, I'm cracking on with things I have kind of caught up. I've also done a bit of filming. I've got a new microphone because my old one broke. It's basically, I've got a very slightly nicer version of the old one. So that's very good. So I've just filmed a latest installment in my bookshelf tour. I want to do some shout outs as well. And also I need to quickly update you on my reading. So I'm still reading Video Nasties by Duncan Ralston. This is like horror short fiction from an indie author. I'm about getting on for two thirds of the way through now. I've read Ralston before and really enjoyed his stuff as well. Uh, and I Probably we'll do a review of it for Tarden Dane's indie read along. We'll see. I'm not too sure. I might actually do like three or four indie books in one because I have read quite a lot of indie recently, but I haven't. None of them have been ones that I want to give full reviews to. I don't think you know. The other thing I wanted to mention, if I can find the bloody thing, I finished reading a bedtime book, and that was Colm Toybin, The Testament of Mary. This is like. Basically, the, the life of Jesus told from Mary, as in his mother's point of view. Uh, it was actually pretty good. I wasn't sure I was going to like it too much. It reminded me of, uh, I recently read uh, Philip Pullman's uh, the, the Poor Man Jesus, no, the, the Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel Christ. And it kind of reminded me of that. It had similar vibes because obviously it's got this biblical subject matter. I enjoyed Pullman's more, but this was pretty good. It was very well written. And uh, that, for me, is what held my interest, I think, because I'm not really... I'm not religious at all, and I'm not really into religious stories. I'll give them a go occasionally. But the quality of his writing, I thought, made it really enjoyable. And also, I can imagine it potentially being quite controversial for some people. I'm not too sure, but... Um yeah, I don't know. if I just took it for what it was, I mean, I ranked it as uh, fiction on my, <laughs> on, my, on, my, on my book blog, so... Alright, so yeah, that's where I'm at. So I'm off to do a little bit more work, and soon I'm going to film my shout-outs for, uh, for April as well. And maybe do a bit more editing, we will see. Alright, bye-bye. <laughs> oh yes! I made uh, cranberry and cashew vegetable bir biryani. Don't mind the stains on my wall. Going to eat now. Oh no! Today I'm watching old school PewDiePie. Okay. And here yes, we have a, a Vietnamese yep. noodle sure uh, bowl with like tofu and salad and sure. stuff. Very nice. This doesn't work out. On with the sound and with me for, for the first time, I think, in two months, is mm -hmm. Dane Cobain. Hello. So, uh, talking about books, and you've got two months of books to talk about. Yes, so uh, hopefully that means that I, I just picked out the, the sort of the very best ones for you. Yes, I mean, we want to hear about ones you don't like as well, really. Well, oh, actually, I do have one I don't oh, like in this pile, books. so, and it's a popular one as well, but oh, I, I, I can be quite specific about my reasons for not liking Ooh, it. Controversial. Should, should, we, should we start with that one? Let's do that. It's, yeah. it's also uh, quite heavy subject matter as well so it's uh, it's the boy in the striped pajamas by John Boyne right. and um, basically this is the story of um, mainly following the son of quite a high up uh, German officer during the Second World War and they have to move away from Berlin uh, to basically oversee this this camp and I can't remember the name that they use for it now but it becomes obvious that they're talking about Auschwitz um, yeah. and actually this kid uh, this kid met uh, Hitler at one point as well and because it's all through his eyes there's kind of an innocence to it but it, it drove me absolutely bonkers because for me there are all these like little plot holes so for example bef before they move to uh, Auschwitz and whatnot that uh, Hitler goes around for dinner and this kid is just like oh he's just a very rude man and it's supposed, supposed to be showing you know how close his father was at the chain of command and whatnot yeah. but, the, but the kid didn't know who Hitler was and I'm like you would know that even if you were eight years old in 1941 in Germany in Berlin, you would know who he was. It's, it's for me. It's like taking a, a kid off the streets in London now and expect, and then not knowing who the Queen is. You just, you would just know, you know. And um, it kind of builds up the, the relationships that this uh, this child makes with uh, another child who's on the other side of the fence. So the the boy in the striped pajamas. And um, but, but basically, it's it didn't seem very well thought out for me because they're having the, these like lengthy conversations both sitting on one side of the fence talking to each other and I'm like where are the guards <laughs> and then um, also there's this this part in it where basically they discover there's a bit of the fence that's loose and you could kind of wriggle in or wriggle out and uh, the little the little kid on the other side inside the camp he never tries to escape uh, spoiler alert towards the end this you know the, the German kid sneaks into the camp and then things go predictably wrong but as soon as he, he finds this little gap under the fence you can kind of see that that's where it's going and I'm also just like well there are no guards this kid's stuck under there and he could crawl out and just walk away why, why is he not doing this so I, I think if you read it purely as kind of because it's meant to be 
almost like um, not quite an allegory or a fable or something along those lines. So it's almost the backdrop of it is almost incidental, and it's trying to be quite a human story about friendship and showing you know people aren't so different. Uh, you know, their circumstances might be different, but the people themselves are pretty much the same, which I can get on board with. But I think you, to deliver that message properly, you also have to have this kind of level of historical kind of accuracy as well. Yes. So, um, so yeah, it was. I don't know. It was I had a bit of a love hate relationship with this book, M- mostly mostly hate to be honest. <laughs> but because um, I went into it as well, really expecting to enjoy it. Because I actually um, I don't know why. It's just something about uh, you know historical and war books, and particularly uh, absolutely fascinate me. Um, but I think. To be honest, the best the best one in that kind of vein that I've ever read was All Quiet on the Western Front, and I keep trying to kind of recapture that, I guess. And um, I, I don't think anyone's done it anywhere near as good as that. So. Yeah, I mean, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, has it won awards? I, 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 I let's it, have a look, I quite, believe so. It's quite a, I, think, um, I think there was a movie uh, of it. Uh, yes, I'm thinking there was, yes, as, as so often we've, happens. We've got lots of praise here. Yeah. Perhaps this was uh, Perhaps this was before... Oh, yeah, so this was... Uh, this was like a second edition of it that I've got, so perhaps right. it was before it went on to make awards and stuff. Um, but just also like a lot of the, the language as well, I'm trying to flick through now to see, uh, uh, there was like a nickname that the kid called Auschwitz because he couldn't pronounce it properly. Yeah. And um, just, and uh, the, uh, for example, instead of the Fuhrer, there was a term for that as well, which, uh, which he used. And I don't know, it, it was. I, I got the feeling as a reader, it was trying to sort of slowly make you aware of what's going on, but it was kind of so obvious <laughs> that it was just. It was just like you might as well just be using the actual names for things. I don't know again whether that's meant to make you feel more like you're in the head of this little boy, um, but yeah, it didn't really work for me, unfortunately. Ah, yeah, because it, it's it's a funny feeling when you don't ha- when something is really popular. Yeah. You don't quite get it yourself. Yeah, and or, yeah. and and well, the thing is as well is quite often with with other stuff that's been quite popular, and I've read it, and I've been like, this isn't for me, but I can see why yes, people would like yeah. it. And don't get me wrong, I can see why people would like this as well. But mm. usually there aren't like basically what I would consider to be plot holes throughout it. So usually, if I don't like a book, you know, it still kind of tends to stand on its own. It's just maybe you know the the themes in it or the writing style or something that I didn't like. But um, yeah, it was just very strange to kind of, and I was going through it, and I, I actually had a, a running conversation with my girlfriend on WhatsApp as I was going, being like, "You'll never guess what's happened now. You'll never guess what's happened now. Oh, now they've done this, and like I'm just, oh, it just." <laughs> and from from the, again from the start of where it started really strongly as well, and I was really interested, and um, I don't know. I think as well with something like that, it's such a, a heavy subject matter as well that I think you've got to. You've got to do it really well, or not at all, you know. Um, especially with something like something like a topic like the Holocaust, which has been covered so many times, yeah. and um, you know, even by people who actually you know survived it and then wrote about their experiences afterwards and stuff. So um, yeah, and uh, you know, like I say, I kind of I've got this this goalpost in my head, which is all quiet on the Western Front. And one of my favourite things about that is that it was banned in Germany for being pro-Polish and banned in Poland for being pro-German, <laughs> which I think is the sign of a good war book, right there. It, it sort of yeah. it didn't pick sides; it just depicted, yes. you know, um, depicted what was happening. And this did that to a certain extent, but um, yeah, I was hoping for more from it for sure. And, and who's the author? John Boyne. Right. Oh, yes. so, he, I will He's say actually, also written a lot of stuff. Lot I mean, I was I was looking here. It, it says he's been uh, okay. So the Thief of Time, the Congress of Rough Riders, Crippen, and Next of Kin, none of which I've heard of. Mm. But um, his work's been translated into seventeen languages, which I think is always a reasonably good sign of success. Yeah. But again, it could be that this one book was translated into seventeen languages because it became, you know, a <laughs> yes. big old bestseller. And yeah. and this, so I think this is also also kind of my issue with it in that I think a lot of people kind of rave about it yeah. because of the subject matter because you don't want to you know you don't want to be seen as criticizing it which I've just gone on sort of radio to do there but <laughs> but um you know I again I, li- I like what it set out to do I just don't think it achieved it particularly well for me so yeah okay so uh, on to books you prefer okay yes uh oh okay well I'll tell you what let's go for um one of a similar length, really, actually, and I would say they're pitched at fairly similar reading audiences, probably, you know, early teens plus, basically. And uh, so this is Holes by Louis Sacker. This is kind of required reading in a lot of American schools, I think. Um, I'm not not so sure over here, but 
basically this this story it's almost two stories in one it starts out about this group of sort of delinquent kids basically who've been sent off to a summer camp except it's not really a summer camp what they have to do is uh, they have to dig a hole i think it's uh, six foot uh, six foot by six foot and six feet deep and they have they have a you know six foot shovel they've been given basically and they can have to lie it down in the hole to show that it's deep enough and big enough and they dig this hole and then the next day they go back out and dig another hole and to start with it's kind of presented as being this sort of character building exercise and the goal is to you know to turn these delinquent youth or whatever into sort of hard-working members of society but maybe about a third of the way in you start to see kind of glimpses of the past and um, it turns out basically the people who run this camp they're digging for something and you kind of start to get more of an idea of, uh, of what it is so this is chipotle tofu with rice and a bit of basil. Lovely. Hello, hello. It is quarter past ten on uh, Saturday morning. Had a few drinks yesterday and um, played some guitar. I, I did actually record some stuff. Maybe I'll put a little clip of that in here.
The day before that as well I went to the radio and did my radio bit so again you saw a little bit of the footage of that and I'll link below if you want to check out the full show. Um, I'm going to Oxford today to go and stay with Bex because she's uh, back from her grandparents where she was recuperating after her uh, operation so I'll get a lot of reading done while I'm there. There's a guy outside just did a three point turn and stared at me while I was filming. So um, yeah I, I've had like three hours sleep or something I didn't I've not been sleeping well in general to be honest but I have a few books to update you on before I go so first of all I'm not sure whether I uh, told you about this but I finished reading Video Nasties by Duncan Rowson it was like 3.5 out of 5 it got a little bit repetitive towards the end but then the final story which is the title story really made up for it as well so I liked you know that that it, it kind of saved this right hook for for right at the end uh, it's probably I prefer his gristle and bone uh, if you want like a collection of his short stories kind of like horror twilight zone inspired tales and uh, yeah I'm still glad I read it and that was for a tarden dane indie read along and then we have some little penguin black classics so we have Sappho come close which is number 74 uh, sensual sun soaked verse on love and the gods in ancient Greece from the poet named the tenth muse by Plato and I didn't realize until doing my review that Sappho is a, a woman as well but I really liked the writing in it the bin man's just gone past the bin man the bin man <laughs> I loved you once years ago Athis when your flower was in place you seemed a gawky girl then, artless, without grace. At this you looked at what I was and hated what you saw, and now all in a flutter chase after Andromeda. So yeah, I gave it like a, probably like a 3.75 out of 5, and uh, I think, what were her dates? It was really old as well, the poetry. So it's one of those where, yeah, so she died 570 BC, but actually the quality of the translation, I guess, makes it quite easy to still read and to still relate to. What else have we got? We've got Antigone by Sophocles, number 55. The tragedy of Oedipus's daughter, a wise, fearless heroine who shuns society's laws from the master Greek dramatist. Now, I believe this is one of like the earliest known plays. Uh, so again, Sophocles died in 406 BC. This was written in uh, 441. And there's something with this, I, I believe it's, it's either, it was either written first chronologically but takes place last or it takes place last chronologically and was written first or something like that. But um, yeah, it was quite interesting. It's kind of feminist and kind of not at the same time. So, and also it very much reminded me of Romeo and Juliet. I think Shakespeare was probably quite heavily inspired by this when he wrote it, because even the plot is kind of the same about these sort of star-crossed lovers and it ends in tragedy. So, uh, so yeah, but yeah, that was pretty good. Probably again, a 3.75, maybe a four out of five. Here we have speaking of Siva, uh, and this is four medieval Hindu saints approach sex and death through riddle and enigma in this mystical devotional poetry. So again, I'll read you some. Um, that looked like good. I actually quite like that. There we go. You're like milk in water. I cannot tell what comes before, what after. Which is the master? Which is the slave? What's big? What's small? O oh Lord, white as jasmine, if an ant should love you and praise you, will he not grow to demon powers? So yeah, again, really enjoyable, especially considering kind of the time period we're in. Uh, we've got dates, uh, 12th century and mid 10th century. So it's actually more recent than some of the other poetry. But again, I just found it quite approachable. Um, that one's probably more 3.5 to be honest, but I'm not spiritual as well, but I still found a lot to enjoy there. Speaking of not being spiritual, we have the Dhammapada, uh, so this is number 80. Ancient aphorisms on endurance, self-control and perfect joy, widely acknowledged as the Buddha's own teachings. So there was one line in this that I actually took a photo of and put on Instagram, uh, on, my, on my vegan Instagram, at Dane's Vegan Journey, because I thought it was just interesting considering I, I'm, a, I'm a vegan pacifist. So where is that line? Here we go. A man is not a great man because he is a warrior and kills other men, but because he hurts not any living being, he in truth is called a great man. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool quote. There's loads of stuff in here. This is something that I'll probably reread a few more times. Again, I'm not particularly spiritual, but there's just a lot of wisdom in here that you can take away from it. I think it's something that everyone should probably read once. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And finally, we're up to the book I'm currently reading, which is Doom 94 by Yanis Yonevs. And uh, he's a Latvian author. I actually met him when I visited Riga last year. And uh, this hadn't been published at the time, not in English, but I was really looking forward to it. It was actually published by Wrecking Ball Press, who published mainly 
non-fiction about music. This is kind of it's kind of non-fiction in the same way that On the Road by Jack Kerouac is non-fiction. I would say it's a sort of semi-autobiographical, kind of reads more like a novel though, but it is very heavily into music. Uh, I've actually been being super rock and roll and using Rizzler here as well to mark out bits that I want to refer to. So right at the start we begin with uh, Kurt Cobain's suicide and then he's getting more into sort of Norwegian, bla well black metal in general really, but he mentioned recently uh, Burzum, which I thought was quite cool. So there are a lot of bands in here that I've kind of listened to on and off that it's cool to see referenced in this kind of literary form and yeah I'm just really enjoying it. it like his childhood, and I mean he was 14 in this and it's very much sort of coming of age I guess, but he's discovering drink and drugs and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, his childhood in, in Tamworth is fairly similar to, like, my ex uh, Sorry, his childhood, his childhood in, um, in Jelgava, in Latvia, was kind of similar to my childhood in Tamworth, I guess. Um, not in terms, necessarily, of the music we listened to, or, you know, or even the characters and the people and stuff like that. But just the vibe from it, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm tired. <laughs> and on that note, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, go for a shower, I guess, and then head to Oxford and uh, read some more of this on the train. All right. This, like, Asimov, like, oh, what are you doing here? And he was like, oh, I'm uh, here to sign some books. And then someone else just turned around and went. <laughs> I've got a great picture of my grandma um, doing that thing. Yeah. She's like, Oh, you're recording. <laughs> Writing equipment. From writing brushes to steatite pencils, reed pens, and a Brahmin stylus from India for writing on palm leaf. Yeah, well, there's some. Um, <gasps> Did you redo? Nose flutes. Nose flutes. Wow. Wait, so these are nose flutes no. as opposed to yeah, so you, yeah, didgeridoos, you, have yeah. Have you seen anyone play nose flutes? I think so, yeah. yeah. Some lutes. Yeah. From flutes to lutes to lamellophones. Lamellophones. I didn't know that was what these are called. Ancient Egypt. <laughs> Damn. This is where we get to like on our way out and then I see like a no <laughs> videos or whatever. There's usually no flash photography, isn't it? Because the flash can damage stuff. So that is a no mask representing a Hanya, the spirit of a jealous woman. Well, that one. That one. Yeah. The one representing Kam Kamasaka, a notorious bandit of ancient legends. He's got my beard. <laughs> Over there we've got animal forming art. Is that a kitty? It is. Hey kitty. Oh, it... Ah, it's the goddess Bast. Yeah, bamboo tobacco pipes. Basically massive wooden bongs, I guess, aren't they? Handsome chap. So metal. Yeah, X sticks that go boom. I, I see, all right. So is he the dude who's responsible for this museum, I guess? Yeah. Air pistol. Oh. 
kind of gross. That is kind of gross. Yeah. Horns. Oh my god. Male armor. It's from Sedan. Pretty cool. That is a beast. Which number is that number eight? Two handed broadsword from Germany. They are some cool shit. I would not want them flying at my head. It comes back to you, doesn't it? Like a demon. I guess so. Bo bit boom. Of bling. Huh? Bling? Bit of bling, yeah. What's that? A bitch one. <laughs> You're looking at Blade, which is a ball headed tomahawk club. Now these are cool. I like me some bows. There's a bolt on the ceiling. Oh, we're right by the totem pole. That right. is like being stabbed with a pineapple. That right. is. Ooh. This is a cool juxtaposition. My God. It is E. coli, you better wash your hands. <laughs> What? <laughs> Why was I so blurry? Um, hello, I am back from Oxford. Uh, what time is it? It's like 20 to 9 on a Sunday. So I think this is a pretty good place to end, but I want to give you a kind of a quick recap. So Oxford was lovely. We went to the, I think it's called the Pitt Rivers Museum, which is part of like, there's, there's also the Natural History Museum there. Uh, we didn't, basically it was going to close after, about 40 minutes after we finished at the Pitt Rivers. So we thought we'll save the Natural History Museum for next time, but hopefully I'll get some more footage. But the footage you did see was of the Pitt Rivers and weirdly we were walking around and I was like I've been here before I remember this and I was about 10 and 
I, I just remembered the place, you know, and I remember my associations of that when that happened. It was like a long weekend away I had with my dad and my grandparents and uh, my uncle and aunt as well. And all I could remember was this one little part of this museum. And uh, yeah, apparently that was where it was. It was in Oxford. I didn't know that. And it was at that specific museum. And because um, I remember because I had lots of these like drawers that you can pull out the drawers as well. And then sort of some of the exhibits I remembered, like the Shrunken Heads exhibit and stuff like that. So that was really cool. Um, we also had some vegan pizza, and then we went to a few charity shops. I actually have a stack of books, I'll show you. Here we go. This is my stack of books that I got from the charity shops, so I will be uh, hauling these soon. Um, so yeah, that was that, and then in the evening we went back to Bex's place, because um, obviously she's still recovering from her operation as well, so we didn't want to kind of overdo it. And uh, she got a new slow cooker, so we decided to make a stew, which was nice. Hey Biggie! And uh, so we did, we had the stew, some, uh, some of our housemates tried it as well actually, they really enjoyed it too. And then we... What, what was that? Really? How come? Yeah? Come here, come and have some fuss. So, um, so that was that. And then, yeah, then we watched, uh, we watched a few things. We watched Takeshi's Castle, because she'd never seen Takeshi's Castle before. And then we watched an episode of like... I can't remember what it was called, but it's about, um, it's like a reality TV show where they get, like, people from the 21st century to undergo the training to become, uh, that the Churchill's spies took, uh, went under, undertook during the, sorry, it's really hard to stroke a cat and talk at the same time for some reason. I don't know how uh, Blofeld or whatever in the Bond movies actually managed that, but practice, I guess. So, and then we watched, uh, that was really good actually, that, that Churchill thing, Churchill's Secret Agents, I think it was called. And then we watched The, the Witch, spelled with two Vs instead of a W. And that was good as well. And then we went to bed. Uh, then, then, then that brings us on to this morning, when this morning we went to meet the Nerd Herd, so that's Bex's friends. Um, they actually do some role playing, so I'm hopefully going to do some role playing with them, although I don't know if I'll be able to film, but if I can film, I will film it. So we met them for breakfast, which was good, then we went back to Bex's, had a nap, and I came home, basically. So <laughs> that's where we are. Books-wise, I only really have this to report on uh, Doom 94 by Yanis Yonevs. I think that's how you pronounce his name. It could be Janis Yonevs, I don't know. I did meet him. So I should probably know this. I met him during my trip to Latvia. And uh, I'm going to do a full review on this. But I gave this like a 4.5 out of 5. The, actually, the only thing wrong with it were that there were like typos. But they were um, the kind where they've obviously, instead of proofreading, they've ran a spell check kind of thing. So there are no like just words that don't make any sense. There are just words that shouldn't be there, if that makes sense. I'm trying to... Like the word find instead of fine or fin or something like that because they'll still be picked up as dictionary words. But um, other than that, the actual story was great. It mostly takes place in 1994 to sort of 1996 Latvia. Uh, they've obviously just come out of Soviet oppression and, uh, you know, he, the author here is sort of semi-autobiographical. So he was a teenager at the time and was really into death metal, doom metal, hence Doom 94. Uh, he actually started out really into Nirvana and then he, he kind of got into heavy metal through that. And um, so it starts with like Kurt Cobain's suicide is right near the start of the book, which I thought was quite interesting. I've only ever seen that in uh, About a Boy where it's kind of used in a fictitious uh, circumstance. But it really helped to set that kind of time and place, you know. And then, yeah, it's basically following him as a kid in, uh, Jelgava in Latvia, basically getting drunk, taking a few drugs, like not heavy drugs, it's like getting stoned and whatnot, and um, going to death metal concerts and like supporting these local death metal bands as well. And so I, I flag quite a lot. I, interestingly, I also chose to use, well, I didn't choose, it was what I had handy when I started. I used Rizzler to uh, tab out the pages, which is pretty rock and roll. Yeah, so I, I'm really looking forward to reviewing this actually. Like I say, 4.5 out of 5, and the only thing wrong with it were those typos. Uh, and that brings us on to my current read, which is Bag of Bones by Stephen King. It's a bit of a big one, so this is probably going to take me half of next week. But um, yeah, uh, it's just another King book that I haven't read yet, so I'm looking forward to getting into it. And this this kind of reminds me a little bit of um, like Lisey's story, because it basically follows it follows a writer uh, after like suffering with the uh, death after the death of his wife. And in Lisey's story, it was kind of the other way around. Uh, uh, the wife of a writer was sort of struggling after his death, um, assuming that I remember correctly and that that's the right Stephen King book, but I'm pretty sure it is. It was one of the first ones that I read. Uh, it was actually one of the ones that made me really fall in love with him, and I remember I was in Milan. Calm down, bud. 
So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it, but I don't expect to, to finish it anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, that seems like a good place to end this vlog anyway, so thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.